It'll be it'll be in the cloud somewhere, and you know, if I really need it, then Jesse will be around to retrieve it because he's the only one that I know that can do these things. Anyways, all right, so let's talk about a winning mentality. How do you develop a winning mentality? What a winning mentality means, so on and so forth. So I, I wrote down here to start before we get into the five points around a winning mentality. This market that we're currently in will not tolerate weak, giving up, passive, or hoping. This market will not tolerate weak, giving up, passive, or hoping. This market will only tolerate the individuals that go after it. You have to go after it. You have to want to win. Okay. We've talked about this a little bit, you know, with buyers, for example, well, you know, you want to submit a buyer's offer. You have to tell your buyer, they need a mentality that they have to win. They have to have a winning mentality to go out there and win the property. You need to have a winning mentality with them. We talked about this with getting listings. It's hard to get listings. Okay. There's, there's a lot of competition out there. There's commission cutting. You have to want to win. You can't just be weak. You can't be passive. You can't just hope. You can't just show up. You have to want to win. And I wrote down here that sales is the ultimate winner and loser business because you get absolutely nothing for second place. So think about this. This is not like this in all industries. Let's take sports, for example. So the basketball playoffs are going on right now. Some of you have stopped caring in Los Angeles because the Lakers are out of it. I get it. Uh, but the basketball playoffs are going on right now. So at the end of the season, there's going to be two teams in the finals. And the team that wins the championship is going to get a bonus. They're going to get a bonus for winning. But the second place team, the team that gets to the finals and loses, also gets a bonus. Their bonus is not as big as the team that wins, but they get a bonus. So they actually get something for coming in second place. You take golf, for example. In golf, you play a tournament. The first place person gets the biggest prize, but second place still money. And boy, if you make second place in golf tournaments, you're not only making money, you're making a lot. You would be a very, very, person if you constantly came in second place in golf you take uh, the basketball draft or baseball draft or football draft right the number one pick gets the biggest signing bonus but second place second pick gets the signing bonus and then you get out of sports you go to these singing competitions or dancing competitions whatever the case may be the first person in the singing competition gets a million dollar deal with whatever record but the person who comes in second, I guarantee you still gets a deal somewhere. They're still getting money. So in a lot of other industries, second place still pays really well. In real estate, second place pays nothing. So that's why it's the ultimate winner and loser business. Okay. Tennis. Yeah. Tennis. Valerie put tennis. Tennis. Perfect example. You know, they just had the, the, I think the French Open just this past weekend, you know, they had a uh, uh, Joker, the guy that's his nickname, won the won the French Open. I guarantee the guy who got second place that he beat got paid. <laughs> and he probably got paid really well. But in real estate, second place gets you nothing. That's why it's the ultimate winner in business, because there's no prize for second place. There's only a prize for winning. If you go out on a listing and they're interviewing two agents and they pick the other agent and they say, wow, you did it. You really did a great job. We thought you did a great presentation, but we went with the other agent anyways. You, you don't get anything for that. You don't get anything for the great job, for the effort, for the showing and coming in second place. Same thing for a buyer. We have 30 offers and yours is the second best offer. So we'll put you in backup position. You don't get anything. So I wrote down here, you have to develop a winning mentality. You have to develop a winning mentality. And then that winning mentality that you have will then show off to your clients that they have to develop a winning mentality. Because remember, for those of you that were here Friday, we watched that video with Grant Cardone. And one of the things that Grant Cardone said is, 
the way that you act is the way that your clients will act. So if you're someone who's always looking for a deal, your clients will be people that look for a deal. If you make decisions fast, your clients will make decisions fast. The same thing. If you develop a winning mentality in your business, your clients will develop that same winning mentality and it will help you all the way around, okay? So that's why we have to develop a winning mentality in this business. So what I wrote down here is five points, five keys to developing a winning mentality, what a winning mentality looks like. Now, under each of those five points is a list of sub points, and we'll go through all those. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and jump into that. These are the five key points to developing a winning mentality. The first point I put down, and well, before we go there, as always, these are not necessarily in any order of importance. These are just the way that the five points were written down. Okay, You, you decide what's more important for you. The first point I put down here on developing a winning mentality is I'm confident enough to know I can beat you. I'm confident enough to know I can beat you, but humble enough to know I need to keep improving. I'm confident enough to know I can beat you, but humble enough to know I need to keep improving. You see, there's a fine line between confident and arrogant, and you have to walk that line, okay? So there's a, con some people mistake that, say, well, that person's very, you know, they, they, they know they can win, they have this, well, it might just be super confident. You know, you see, again, I, I'm a big sports guy, so I see this in sports all the time. You'll see some athletes and go, oh, they, he's so arrogant. He knows he's going to beat that guy. He knows they're going to win. Oh, some of it's just confidence. He's confident that he's going to beat you. Okay. And then there is some arrogance, and that's when you get caught off guard when you're not prepared. But you have to walk the line between and arrogant because you have to have the confidence that you can win, that you can beat the other agent. You have to believe to your core that you're good enough to do the job and that you deserve to win and that they would be taking a giant risk if they work with somebody else. You have to believe to your core that you're good enough to do the job, that you deserve to win and that they would be taking a giant risk if they work with somebody else. That's the confidence factor. You have to ask yourself this question, why not me? Why not me? We talk about this all the time, right? In terms of if they were gonna, they're gonna interview another agent. And some people don't like asking number two question and pre-qualifying, are you planning to interview another agent because of the fear that they might say yes. Why should you have a fear if they say yes, if they are going to interview another agent? Shouldn't matter if they're gonna interview another agent and it shouldn't matter who it is. Do you plan to interview another agent for jobs? Yes, great. Do you mind if you tell me who that agent's gonna be? Oh yeah, it's this guy named Hal Swayze. You shouldn't go, oh crap. You know what, I'm just, you know what, just give it, give it to him. I'm not even gonna go. Who are you going to interview? Valerie Caro. Oh, God, never mind. Forget it. You shouldn't have that. You should be like, okay, great. Because you have to ask, why not me? If Hal Swayze gets 85% of the listings he goes on, that means he doesn't get a listing 15% of the time. Why can't I be one of the 15%? Why not me? Okay. Part of that confidence I wrote down here under sub, sub point on point one, you have to look the part, walk the part, talk the part, and act the part. <clears throat> so you can tell when people are confident, the way they walk, carry themselves, the way they talk, they talk with authority, they talk with confidence, they act the part, they act like they know that they're good enough to take the job. The whole thing. So you have to have that confidence within yourself. Okay. You have to have that. In your... <clears throat> I wrote down here. You have to have the mentality. I know that if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to earn it. That's part of the confidence. 
I know that if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to earn it. I'm not just going to roll over and let you take it because I know I'm good enough for the job. So you're going to have to fight for it. See, people roll over and don't fight because they don't have the confidence for the job. They don't think they're good enough. So what are they fighting for? Can't have that. I'm going to lose sometimes, no doubt about it. But if I'm going to lose, I'm going down swinging. I'm going down fighting. And whoever beats me, whoever gets the job, whoever gets the offer accepted, whoever gets the listing signed, they're going to know I had to earn that one. Never will I lose a listing. This is the mentality. Never will I lose a listing where the person who got the job went, well, oh, that was pretty easy. I just walked right in and got it. Never. They're going to have to earn it. Over. <clears throat> Not going to happen. But I wrote down here, in the midst of all that confidence, in the midst of all that conviction, in the midst of all that I'm good enough, I deserve to win, I got this, in the midst of all that, I need to constantly improve because no matter how good I am, I don't win every time. So while I'm telling you, you, you have to be super confident, you have to walk the line of confidence and arrogance. You deserve to win. They'd be taking a giant risk if they went with somebody else. You also have to understand that I constantly, no matter how good I am, I don't win every time. And everybody is coming for me. And the world is evolving all the time. So I have to keep getting better because you have to remember when you're at the top, everybody's coming for you which means their rate of improvement is typically faster than yours because they're trying to get to where you are. So if you don't have that mentality of constantly improving, no matter how good, I, how good you are, they're gonna catch up and guess what? They're gonna have all the momentum and then they're gonna pass you. <clears throat> I, wrote, I wrote down here, when you get to where I am, where I was. When you get to where I am, you'll be where I was. That's the mentality of constantly improving. I'm here now. Okay, you're trying to get here. Well, by the time you get here, guess what? I'm here. But that's the first part of the winning mentality. I'm confident enough to know I can beat you, but I'm humble enough to know I need to keep improving. Because the greats don't stop. Till the day he retired, Michael Jordan was at practice an hour earlier than everybody else to the day he retired. Pretty good by that point, by the way. <laughs> he, was, he was pretty good. He knew this was his last year. So he knew, well, you're never going to catch me because this is my last year and I'm already so far ahead. And yet he was still at a practice an hour earlier before everyone else because he was going to go down as the best. I wrote down here, last point on point one. The moment I stop improving is the moment I start losing. The moment I stop improving is the moment I start losing. <clears throat> it's a key, key point there. Okay, point number two, okay, on developing a winning mentality. So that was all part of point number one. Point number one is the longest, okay? So point number one, again, was I'm confident enough to know I can beat you, but humble enough to know I need to keep improving. Point number two. I'm going to fail a lot, but I will not let it get to me. I'm going to fail a lot, but I will not let it get to me. That's the second point of developing a winning mentality. So I wrote down here, no blame game, no excuses, no whining, no complaining. Just review, refuel, and re-engage. No blaming, no excuses, no whining, no complaining, review, refuel, re-engage. You're going to fail. That's part of the gig. Nobody wins in any industry all the time. Heck, in baseball, if you're a hitter in baseball and you get a hit three out of 10 times, if you get a hit 30% of the time, you're in the Hall of Fame. Three out of 10. That's all that's expected of you. And you're in the Hall of Fame. You're not going to win every time. 
Okay. We talk about these agents all the time, all these people that we've seen on stage, all these people that Neil interviews, none of them get 100% of the listings they go on. None of them get 99%. They get 90, they get 85, they get 80. You're not going to win every time. Nobody makes five calls, sets five appointments. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Okay. So, don't blame anybody. Don't make any excuses. No whining, no complaining. Take your fail, review, refuel, and re-engage. I wrote down here, you're going to fail sometimes. I Pardon the language, but this is just the reality. You're going to suck sometimes. You're going to fail sometimes. You're going to suck sometimes. You're going to embarrass yourself. I wrote it down here. Nobody gives a crap. Get over it and get back after it. Now, I'll be honest. I wrote it down with a little more colorful language believe it or not. But I'm trying to clean it up around here. Okay. <laughs> and that's the best way I can clean it up. You're going to fail. You're going to suck. You're going to embarrass yourself. Nobody gives a crap. Get over it. Get back after it. You don't have to share the story. Actually, we're not going to share the story. But who here has had a very, very embarrassing moment in their sales career? Okay. Yeah. All of us. Well, this is one of my favorite Mike Ferry lines. If you don't have any embarrassing moments, you typically don't have any production. Because when you're out doing stuff, it's just going to happen sometimes. The stories that, you know, Mike's told about the lady doing an open house at the wrong house. Okay. You know, we've heard stories of people showing property and they, their shoe breaks and they fall down or they trip over the stairs or, you know, whatever the case may be. And trust me, again, we're not going to share, but I've got some doozies. Okay. But the point is you're going to embarrass yourself sometimes. Nobody cares. The client doesn't care. Nobody cares. You get over it. You get back after it. You're going to fail, but you're not going to let it get to you. I wrote down here, use your failure to motivate you. Instead of letting the failure get to you, let your failure motivate you to get you to the next step. Well, that's not going to happen again. I'm going to overcome that. I'll show you. I know I, I reference this guy a lot, but it's only because he's one of my idols and it's Michael Jordan. You want to ever see a guy use failure to motivate himself probably the best of the best. And if, you, and if you ever want to hear about it, listen to his Hall of Fame speech. He got inducted to the Hall of Fame and all he did was thank all the people that doubted him. Oh, I want to thank my, my high school coach for cutting me my sophomore year. Wanted to make sure that he looked foolish next year. Came back better than ever. I want to thank this guy for saying that he could guard me when I got to the NBA. Went out and put 50 on him. Like, okay. <laughs> like, you know, this was a guy that just used failure to motivate him. He didn't get down. He was like, yeah, I failed, but guess what? I'm coming after you. You know, he remembered when the Detroit Pistons beat him and they were talking a lot of smack about him that he wasn't a complete player, that he was just a scorer. And he said, okay. Next summer, he hit the weight room, came back better than ever and dominated him. Use your failure to motivate you. I'll sh guess what? First myself, I failed, I got knocked down, but guess what? I'm coming back. And I'll show you. You wait and see. I'm gonna fail a lot, but I'm not gonna let it get to me. All right, next point I put down here. Point three on developing a winning mentality. Okay, this one's my personal favorite. I don't need luck, I got this. Point three on developing a winning mentality. I don't need luck, I got this. So I looked up the word luck in the, in the dictionary. The definition of, well, one of the definitions of luck, you know, you know, you go to the dictionary and it's like, well, this could be this. Could be that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the definitions of luck is this, the force that seems to operate for good or ill in a person's life as in shape, shaping circumstances, events, or opportunities, the force that seems to operate for good or ill in a person's life as in shaping circumstances, events, or opportunities. The force. 
like Star Wars? <laughs> like, like we're, we're talking about Star Wars here, the, the, the force that shapes my life, okay? I don't need the force. I don't need Obi-Wan Kenobi. I don't need Luke Walker. I don't need Yoda. No, I don't need nobody. I got this. But that's the definition of luck. It's the force that seems to operate for good or ill. Well, I don't need that. I wrote down here, I'm not that trustworthy to leave my life up to a special force. I'm going to make it happen. I need some luck. That means you're saying, I need force. I need the force. Of no, 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 no. I don't need some special force. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. Okay. Life is, and, and then some people will say, well, it's just all part of the plan, right? It's all part of the plan. No, no. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, but I, life is too chaotic and too stressful. And there's too much life to live out there to just assume that my life is already figured out for me, signed, sealed, delivered. No, I can't believe that thought. You can have your faith, and I do, but to have faith and action. Because your faith provides for those that take action every day, not for those that sit around waiting. And then only complain when things get bad. That's why you ever, do you ever notice that when they say, well, that person gets all the luck. It's usually the ones that are the most active, the most engaged the ones that are opening the most doors, the ones that are talking to the most people, those are the ones that seem to have all the quote unquote luck. It's not all planned out. There's not some mythical force out there. I don't need luck. I got this. I'm going to make this happen. I'm not putting my life in the hands, my life in the hands of some force or some pre-planned conception of what my life is. I'm going to take it. It's mine. I got this. I don't need the luck. You're looking for luck, you're gonna be looking forever. And you'll probably die very unhappy. It's just the truth. I don't mean to get morbid here, but that's the reality. I see, I hear this all the time. Oh, I need luck. My grandma, true story, true story. When I was younger, okay, because I'm, I'm half Irish, I'm Irish and German. When I was younger, my grandma, who's from Ireland, I was having a, a, like a rough, rough patch. And I said, God, whatever happened to the luck of the Irish? And my grandma looked at me and she said, they never said if it was good luck or bad luck, did they? And I went, no, that's true. And she goes, yeah, then don't worry about it. Go make it happen yourself. I said, okay, thanks grandma. And I walked away. No need, I didn't need it. Go figure it out, okay? I wrote down here under, you got this, okay? In sports, when the game's on the line, the winners want the ball. They say, I got this. In our world, in real estate, if you need a paycheck, if you need money, if you need a deal, are you a, I need a luck person or are you a, I got this person? You need money, you need a deal. You're gonna sit around and wait for the luck to happen for all of a sudden your phone to magically ring of someone who's looking to sell their $10 million property that you're just going to kind of stumble upon a lead or are you the person that says, I need money. I need a paycheck. I got this. I'm going to go make it happen. Difference between a winning mentality and not. I wrote down here. Luck is just preparation meeting opportunity. Luck is just preparation meeting opportunity. When you're prepared and you take action, the opportunity arises and then you can conquer that opportunity. That's not luck. You were prepared for it because here's what really happens. Okay, the famous Les Brown quote. It's better to be prepared for an opportunity that doesn't happen than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. See, most people want luck. They don't, they don't have preparation. And really, they get lucky because we get opportunities all the time, but they're not prepared for it. So then they miss it, right? It's like that, uh, if you ever saw the original Dumb and Dumber movie, right? They go, oh, gosh, if we could just catch a break. Then this bus, they're in the middle of nowhere. And this bus rolls by with all these models on there. And they're looking for two guys to like travel with them. And they're like, oh no, go back that way. There's, you'll find some people there. And they're like, oh, don't worry. We'll get our chance. 
They just they missed the opportunity that was right in front of them. But we miss opportunities all the time because we're not prepared and we think, oh gosh, I just could use a little luck. No way, man. No way. And I wrote down here, last point under this, under this part here, I wrote down, what you think is luck is me just creating. What you think is luck is me just creating. Oh, they're lucky. No, no, I'm just creating deals. I'm just creating things. How many times have you thought there was nothing there? There was nothing there. And then you have a talk like Neil or you, or you have a talk with Mike or something like that. And then we find a deal in the contacts or we find a way to make a deal work. That's not luck. That's creating. That happens all the time. Whether you're in a mastermind group, a coaching call, oh man, I, 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 there's just no deal there. Well, hold on. Let me take another look at it. And then we find a deal or we find a different way to go about it. That's just creating. There's a difference. You have to understand the difference between luck and just creating. What you think is luck, they found a deal, was just creating, looking at things a different way. Huge, huge point there, developing a winning mentality. I don't need luck. I got this. All right, point four. Point four on developing a winning mentality. Two words you will never hear me say, I quit. Two words you will never hear me say, I quit. I lost, so what? I got beat, so what? I was embarrassed, so what? I will not quit. I will come back and do it again and again and, and again until I get it right or then you quit and I win by <laughs> What or the other? I'm not going to quit. I'll just keep coming back and coming back and I'm either going to get it right and succeed, or you're going to quit because longevity, and then I'll win by default. I wrote down here, quitting is a short-term answer to a long-term problem. Quitting is a short-term answer to a long-term problem. What I mean by that is the impact of quitting is not today because it's just one day. You quit today, you're not going to feel the impact today because you just quit today. Today's just one day. Okay. But the impact from quitting today is 10 years, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. I mean, you plan on being alive 10, 20, 30 years from now, right? Well, quitting today will affect who you are 30 years from now because you quit, because you gave up. So that, that's what most people don't understand about quitting. They don't see it as that big of a deal. It's not about today. It's about down the road. Now, I wrote down here, winners, developing that winning mentality, winners understand the difference between not quitting and insanity. Okay? So stick with me on this. <laughs> okay? Winners understand the difference between not quitting and insanity. Okay? So here's what I mean. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, which really is just quitting in a different way. And what I mean by that is you've given up learning, you've given up improving, you've given up willingness to change. You're just going through the motions, just trying to make it through another day. That's just another form of quitting. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Well, Robert, I haven't quit. I'm still at it every day, but you're not improving. You're not changing. You're literally insanity. That's just another form of quitting. A winner comes back better, stronger, hungrier. That's the difference between not quitting and insanity. See, sometimes we get those two confused. We don't like to throw the word insanity around because it has such a massive negative consequence to it in our minds. But the reality is that's what a lot of people do is insanity. They come back and they do the same thing over and over again. They expect a different result. And they think that, well, they haven't given up. That's just a different way. That's why, that's why one of my least favorite sales cliches ever is, 
Well, every no gets me closer to a yes. That is a giant load of crap if you don't get any better. Because if you suck at your script and you suck at your pitch and they tell you no, and then you do the same thing, you're just gonna get no. But if you take no and get better and get stronger and get hungrier, then yes, you get closer to a yes. That's improving, that's not quitting. Take no, you take rejection, you get better, you get stronger, figure out what went wrong, how do I make it better? I wrote down here the last point under point four, okay, last sub point under point four. A winner can't quit because they understand this is the only shot they have at doing something amazing. A winner can't quit because they understand this is the only shot they have at doing something amazing. A winner knows that there's a giant world out there filled with amazing things to explore. But that same world is also small enough to where it's possible to explore all of them. I understand the United States wasn't around 500 years ago. Okay, bear with me here. Okay, but 500 years ago, you couldn't really go from one land to another. You were wherever you were born, that's where you were. There's no planes, there was no trains, there was no automobiles. Now, California to Italy, 13 hour plane flight, let's go. Why can't you go explore it? California to China, California to Australia, it's less than a day's work. It's a long flight. But the point is, is that, yeah, there's a giant world out there with all these amazing things, but you can get there. And you can go explore all these things and see all these things. But if you don't have that winning mentality, it seems too big. You got a shot to do something really amazing here. I wrote down here, quitters stay local, winners go global. Quitters stay local, winners go global. Look at, there's nothing wrong. If you're never going to leave ever and travel or see the world ever living in Southern California is probably the place to be because this is a great place but why not get out of your LA bubble your Orange County bubble your Riverside bubble your San Bernardino bubble your San Diego bubble why not get out of that and go see something bigger go see something really neat Okay, go, go see some buildings, you know, in Ireland that were born or born, built BC. For those of you who don't know what that means, it was a long time ago. Okay, why not? Quitters stay local, winners go global. Okay, can't quit, can't quit. All right, last point here, point five. Point five on developing a winning mentality. I wrote down here, is not my part-time job. Winning is not my part-time job. You can't, I'm gonna say these next couple points and I'm gonna say these next couple points and I hope none of you get upset. Now I'm saying this understanding that I don't think any of you, I think all of you are winners. Not just because I have to say that, because I really do. You're here. A lot of people in our business that are not winners. I have no problem saying that. There are a lot of people in life that I don't think are winners. There's probably some of you that don't think I'm a winner, but that's okay. Okay, right? Such is life. I'm going to say the next couple points, and I hope that either you or if it's you're thinking of somebody you know, you don't get offended or you don't get upset, okay? But, but you, you just, you got to bear with me on this, okay? I'm only doing this because I care. You can't be a winner eight hours a day and a loser. Be a winner in here and then a loser out there. You can't be a slob at home 
right? You can't be, okay, all right. Can you repeat the last line? It doesn't work that way. You can't be a winner in here and a loser out there. You can't be a slob at home, a terrible spouse, a terrible parent, undisciplined, unorganized, uncommitted, reckless in your personal life, and expect to be a winner in your professional life. This is not going to happen. Nobody's perfect. You're going to make mistakes and you're going to have issues in your personal life, but you have to follow the same steps that we discussed. Winning is not my part-time job. It just doesn't work that way. If you have an undisciplined, unorganized, uncommitted, reckless personal life, you will not be successful in your professional life. It just won't happen. And you may think, well, I know people that are totally messes outside of work. I'll bet they're not as big as mess as you think they are. They might have, you know, maybe they drink a little too much. Maybe, maybe they're not the best spouse. Okay. But I'll bet it's not as bad as you think they are. And if they're still very successful at work, it doesn't work that way. You want to develop a winning mentality. It, it, it's around the clock work, but again, nobody's perfect. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have issues. You're going to say the wrong thing sometimes. You're going to upset people. You're going to screw up. That's what part of the gig. I'm talking on a regular basis. Okay, you can't do those kind of things. Reminds me of, I've shared this story with you before. When I was 20 years old, had my first real sales job doing home loans. My boss tells me, first day of work, whatever happens in here, you leave that stuff out there, you leave it out there before you come in here. And when you leave here, you leave this stuff in here. I said, wow, what a great concept. So if I don't make any money in here, my wife can't get mad at me out there. Oh, this is great, honey. I know we don't have any money, but that's an in there problem. I'm out here now. <laughs> that doesn't work. Okay. I wrote down here, so your kid's a pain in the ass. What are you going to do, quit? You're going to quit being a parent? Your kid's 13 years old and they have an attitude. What a shock. <laughs> okay. You deal with it. You keep fighting. You keep parenting. This is not a part-time gig. You keep going. But you have to really, for some people, this point right here is the one that really gets home. They're a mess. They think, oh gosh, like my, my professional life, I just can't figure it out. And then when really it's because their, per, their personal life is a total mess on a daily basis. Not talking on a sometimes basis, because again, nobody's perfect. I'm talking about like on a daily basis is a mess. Winning is not my part-time job. It's a very, very key point. So look, those are the five key things I wrote down on developing a winning mentality, okay? I'm confident, number one is, I'm confident enough to know I can beat you, but humble enough to know I need to keep improving. Number two is, I'm going to fail a lot, but I will not let it get to me. Number three is, I don't need luck, I got this. Number four, two words you will not hear me say, I quit. And number five, winning is not my part-time job. And so look, going back to the very beginning, putting a bow on all of this, this is an ultimate winner and loser business, okay? In this market, you have to have a winning mentality. Your clients have to have a winning mentality. The whole thing needs to have a winning mentality. Otherwise, it's going to be tough to get listings. It's going to be tough to get your offers accepted with buyers. It's going to be tough, okay? But I tell you, when you develop that winning mentality and you go after it that way, then... Then what happens is then when other, you become that agent that other agents become fearful of asking that pre-qualifying question. And that's when it comes really, that's when it gets really fun. Are you planning to interview another agent? Yeah, I am. Oh, who are you interviewing? And then they're going to say your name and the other agent's going to go, oh, crap. And then they just walk away. No, no reason why it can't happen to you. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Thanks for being around. Thanks for participating. I appreciate all the work, effort, and energy. We're closing up the, we're getting closer to the end of the first half. So a lot, a lot of really cool stuff there. So good stuff. All right, so we got, remember, tomorrow we got Jack Ma 1215 doing a mastermind. We got two masterminds this week, one of our very own. Uh, 3.30, we got Cindy doing a class. And then this afternoon, 
We got open.